This is your friend Ike, and you are listening to Wrestling Win Entertainment. Hello, 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 and welcome to the show. It's Wrestling Wit Entertainment, bringing you the latest exclusive breaking news, previewing and reviewing the latest shows from WWE, AEW, New Japan, oh, and, God. and everything in between every Saturday, and interviewing all your favorite wrestlers every Wednesday on YouTube and CastBox. Sponsored by Rogue Energy and Player One Coffee. Use promo code Wrestling with E for 10% off your next purchase and use the link tree link in the description of the video below. I am, of course, your host, James Shea, alongside the leader of Squaw Squad, Kaliko Yats, who is not here, of course. But who is here? The American Scooter Dust. You know how to, you know how to find Will Smith in the snow? Just follow the Fresh Prince. And it's a great day for wrestling. Uh, last week on the show, we interviewed um, Christian Robinson in our one-year anniversary interview. Um, incredible uh, listen, three hours. If you listen to all three hours in one go, you are my hero. Um, but of course, we wish uh, Christian the best, and hope that uh, next time there's even more to talk about, right, Scooter? You know? Yes, of course, absolutely, for that doubt. This upcoming uh, Wednesday, we got Ike the Bite, so you don't want to miss that one for sure. Um, and here's a little sound bite. Get into some weird, more of the weirder things. You, you're like the bite. You bite people. Um, anybody have a funny taste? Anyone have a funny taste? Uh, not gonna name names here, but there's one time I was in a UFO battle royal, and I bit this one dude. He's a pretty big dude, and I'm pretty sure he didn't wash his gear. Ever. And I'm like, oh. God, oh. <laughs> well, you know what? We all we all have our days. Maybe he's just having a sweaty day. Instant regret. Like <laughs> <laughs> that was that was probably the moment he was like, "Fuck this shit," especially with the pandemic. Like, fuck this. Yeah, that was the moment I was like, "I gotta stop biting people." I gotta, <laughs> I gotta start using the claw. <laughs> And we got more and more things coming up. Um, stay tuned to our Twitter handle, uh, Wrestling with E, for more information on who we got coming up in the future. Um, it was not a great day for wrestling this week, uh, Scooter. Um, Ring of Honors is, is closing their doors for the time being, starting in uh, December. Yes, and. The rumor is that there are two major rumors. Um, none of them. One one of them has more more credence than the other. The first one is the entire restructuring uh, you know, over at Sinclair Media. Um, not the other is not Ring of Honor. Tony the, Khan the is Khan flat company, out buying um, them. There's a restructuring of Sinclair, um... Which would be interesting if James's Wi-Fi did not cut out. I, but the rumor is Tony Khan is flat out buying them. Um, and, you know, given, given every, with everything that's going on in the past year, yeah, uh, past year and a half, now coming up on two years, uh... It's not surprising that Ring of Honor would be closing its doors. I mean, they're they're an independent promotion without a home at this point. They went from being essentially the most recognized independent promotion in the country to a shell of its former self. 
Now, if Tony Khan flat out buys Ring of Honor, we're we're gonna start to see probably a lot of New Japan esque splintering in AEW. I saw. I mean, since we we already have the elite and we have the super click within the elite, we're gonna have you know. At at some point, you know, I with Bobby and Red Dragon, whatever you want to call them, uh, you know, Ring of Honor will you know will would be some sort of like it would be some sort of faction that. Essentially, Brian Danielson would be at the forefront of, and, and, and Danielson and Punk, at that at, at, at this point. Um, well, you said that it's this isn't really a Ring but, of Honor thing that's going on. It's more of a Sinclair broadcasting issue. Oh, is, all right. Is, I'm done. Is Ring of Honor just? So, it seems like this is more of a, you said at the beginning, it's uh, Sinclair um, is kind of restructuring. So this really might not have had anything to do with Ring of Honor, just them kind of getting put in the cross uh, pile, no? Yeah, um, now, keep in mind that this is this is a hiatus. And they're closing after Final Battle in December. And this is a... Essentially, it's a re... There's, it's going to be relaunched in April of uh, next year. Ring of Honor, 2.0. Yep, and, and whether that's got any financial backing from Tony Khan remains yet to be seen. Do you honestly believe that Tony Khan would buy Ring of Honor? That would it make sense it, for them to? Well, considering the the rumors about Tony wanting to launch an AEW video library, and they don't have that much content. At this point, and yet, having Ring of Honor's library would be a massive perk. But it's only uh, the library from 2012 to now. It's not a uh, pre Sinclair purchase. I'm 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 sure Tony could figure out a way to to purchase the library before uh yeah before Sinclair. Well, let's, then there's the the fact that if they are selling their library and there is some type of you know um truth to that, won't WWE be the at the head of that, considering that they purchase all these independent um, companies and put their libraries on the the network and but, Peacock and all that stuff. Yeah, but the thing is, is that Ring of Honor really is U.S. based, and if the WWE Network was still a U.S. thing, I would say, yeah, they should be at the forefront of this. But, since there's no consistent 24-hour WWE Network anymore in the United States, ROH's entire library, aside from, you know, what's available on IWTV, and and the other potential, you know, the other streaming services uh, we don't know about. That becomes a very important asset. 
And again, with Tony Khan looking to establish essentially an AEW network where more people can take in the content, more fans can watch the pay-per-view, uh, and, and whatnot. Having Ring of Honor, the library, and then even launching, you know, Ring of Honor as, you know, the show of AEW, you know, the show of, uh, you know, AEW Dark and Dark Elevation and whatnot, that would allow AEW to focus on smaller, more intimate venues. Well, it's it, 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 basically it would it would be like having a developmental, but one that travels beyond the limits of Florida. What Spring of Honor was primarily based just uh, on the East Coast. I mean, they didn't go; they only came to Las Ve- as far as Las Vegas, or wherever that uh, WrestleMania was that year. So. You're not wrong about that, but what what are the odds that Ring of Honor actually does um, come back with a reboot in April? Uh, well, well, considering that everybody is being released from their contracts, everybody. So it seems like ROH is being built, rebuilt from the ground up, which kind of makes me wonder: is does 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 Wow have anything to do with this potential? Uh, Reimagining as well. Hmm. Well, as far as I know, the, only the library is possibly maybe getting sold. The company, the actual company, is still going to be Sinclair uh, Broadcasting, no? Y- yes, but at the same time, you have to wonder if Sinclair wants to just get rid of Ring of Honor at this point, seeing how it's no, it's really no longer a profitable asset for them. Was Ring of Honor ever really a a profitable asset for them? I mean, there was only maybe two, maybe three years that were significant in their the 2012 to 2021 reign. I, I mean, I, again, I'm talking, I'm talking pre Sinclair. Right. I mean, yeah. After after you know, independent talent started getting recognized, started getting signed up left and right. You know, it it. it it became hard for the mainstream indie companies and the two that yeah that, that exist ring of honor and mlw and mlw is hanging on by a thread at this point too um the kind of AEW put a wrench in that because first and foremost they post their three top talents, which was Cody and the Buffs, uh, and they never really recovered after that. They never found somebody to take up that mantle for them. Um, and where was I going with this? They were they never really recovered after that 
in, fi in finding somebody. And then AEW came around. So even if there was somebody that would maybe be interested in a Ring of Honor, they went to AEW instead. Am I kind of wrong on that? No, not at all. There's so much content out there right now, whether it be WWE, AEW, Ring of Honor, Impact, New Japan, MLW, Limitless. Did Ring of Honor just kind of get stuck and get lost in the shuffle? Yeah, they absolutely did. I mean, we're seeing we're seeing regional indies start to thrive again. It, it, it's 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 a new dawn of independent wrestling, and it it screw. It, I don't want to say it screws over, but it real it puts a wrench in companies that were planning you know, companies like Raid of Honor that you know transcend the status of an independent promotion but are not quite you know on a on a global scale as AEW and the WWE. And I will say um Ring of Honor they could have did this. They could have let everybody go um, during the pandemic, kind of leaving them to kind of flutter. But they didn't. They waited until things kind of opened up. There are all other places to go for these uh, talent because they had some a uh, quite a few good uh, talent at Ring of Honor. Um, and to have them still under contract during that hard time and paying them. Uh, you know what? Kudos to them, right? Yeah, absolutely. And um, talent uh, will be paid uh, for three months after, uh, after ROH closes its doors after final battle. Well, hopefully it's not the last we heard of Ring of Honor. Let's hope that they actually do come back in April and kick out at that too. Somebody that thought he kicked out at too, uh, Goldberg, said that he shut up those fuckers with his crown jewel performance. Did he shut up those fuckers, Scooter? Did Goldberg shut up those fuckers? Um, I don't know where them fuckers at. Um, uh, is he talking about? Just not criticize him. Oh, okay, guys, that could that could have gone very bad very quickly. Um, we, we could we could could have had another you know. We could have had an anti Dave Chappelle situation on our hands. Um But Yeah, it 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 probably was I mean it probably was the best Goldberg match in five years. Yeah, it's probably it's the best Goldberg match in um in seventeen years. When was the last time he had a good match? <laughs> that, that's the point. <laughs> I mean, like, the, yeah. the Black Lester <laughs> one was decent, but that was only 27 seconds long. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm going back 17 years to WrestleMania 20. Oh, God, that was, that wasn't even half passable. Oh. I mean, yeah. Well, maybe he did talk 
to set up those fuckers, maybe he didn't. Wait, wait, wait did, he, did he fuck the shut uppers? What? He set up those fuckers. <laughs> um, somebody that's keeping quiet about those fuckers, uh, Charlotte. Um, she's been having problems internally in WWE. Um, I recently came across an interview she did with Renee Young as well, and it just seems like Charlotte is buying into her own, her own, uh, hype. Hype, yeah, thank you. Well, it's either she's trying to get fired at this point, which will never happen, um, the other the other possibility is it's a work. Oh good lord, this is a work. You think it's a work? Oh absolutely. One hundred percent. And, and 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 Charlotte even goes into it a little bit on yeah he went into it a little bit on SmackDown last night yeah because she's the she was the first person out on SmackDown um so I think. Well, I think I think this is a work, and if there, and if there is any sort of, you know, actual like truth to this, because let let's be real, it involved Charlotte and Becky, who are who are best friends. Apparently not anymore, but, you know, that could be a work as well. This is, I really feel like this is a work, and the, Charlotte, if they let Charlotte get away, AEW made a, a smart investment with Andrade. A AEW will not only get her, but AEW will pull the trigger on making her a seventeen-time champion. Oh, without a doubt. And and they will have the they will have the. Uh, they they will lay claim to having that accomplishment. They would. No, you said no, you said it. It's a walk. Could this yeah. be a walk that turned into a soup? No, no, not not really, because the the only part of this I buy is. Charlotte's ideas being turned down because Charlotte thought she was she was suggesting the right thing to do. Yeah. Charlotte again originally wanted to drop the Royal Women's Championship to Bianca last week before they had the title exchange. That's correct. And but that could be rumor and innuendo as well. I mean, that, that, she could have been upset after that, and then they probably built on that and or got the inspiration for this whole little thing, but this screams work. All right. Now we got um, something that happened last week. Um, maybe not worth going into full detail about, but still worth covering. Uh, 
Impact Wrestling's biggest show of the year, Bound for Glory, was last Saturday. Um, in case you missed it, the Iconics, now the Inspiration, won the Tag Team Championships um, from the Decay, uh, Rosemary and uh, Jessica Havoc. Um, that's definitely a walk, right? Uh, <laughs> no, it's a shoot, brother. <laughs> but look at uh, Casey Lee. She uh, she came in her first night on the job and won a championship. That's a lot more than um, Sean Spears could say, no? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, Mickey James won the knockout championship from Deanna Perrazzo. Um, it's kind of funny that, you know, you say that you're promoting women's wrestling and you want to inspire new people to come up and grab that brass ring, but you don't put over the goal that's going to lead that new generation. Am I wrong or am I right, Scooter? You're right, but then again, I... I honestly, I... I don't see what everybody else saw in Diana Perazzo. <gasps> How dare you? I'm sorry, I don't. Uh... She was a great wrestler. You know, and she didn't really just... I didn't feel like she got the, the credit that she really deserves until just recently. So... And I mean, getting a win over Mickey James would have been significant, no? Yes, it would have. It, it, it definitely would have, but... Because... Well, yeah. This, uh, you know, it, 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 and I mean, unless they're setting Mickey up to be the heel and they want to push the on as a face, then they're going in the right direction. I said this before on the show. Um, I could appreciate that Mickey James wants her flowers, but it seems like she wants more than just her flowers. She wants the candy, the bear, the the dinner. The dinner, the, hotel, the limo the hotel, ride, the fifteen minutes of oral. Oh, I think she was on uh, Vinay already. I think it was longer than fifteen minutes. Yeah. You know. Vinay Young, great interview. Um, oh, um, James, you're young. You have so much to learn. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Not, as you could tell, not my favorite match on the card. Um, and on the main event, we had Joss Alexander win the Impact Championship from Christian Cage. Um, beautiful little moment. He had his wife and kid come in the ring, celebrate with him. <laughs> then Moose came in and fucked it all up. Moose. God, I love Moose. <laughs> he won the match with his his son and child still in the ring. Uh, Moose uh, cast in his Call Your Shot trophy, in a briefcase, a trophy, uh, and won the <laughs> Impact Championship right uh, from under Josh Alexander's nose. So that, I got to All right, I got to give props to Josh Alexander for that. To be willing to get essentially ragdolled in front of your family while they're in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Josh could have easily said, no, please, don't do this in front of my family. No, Josh Alexander plays fucking ball, man. That's fucking admirable. You know, I've been watching wrestling a really long time, so not a lot of things surprises me anymore. 
Uh, my jaw dropped when I saw Moose casting his trophy with his family still in the ring. It was despicable, it was underhanded, and I loved every minute of it. <laughs> that, that had to have been a Don Callis call, correct? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a Don Callis call. And, uh... Oh, can we, uh, can we, I, I think, I think we can acknowledge this now, that Impact is, now is, is truly now the first national promotion that's getting rid of the gender lines. I yeah, but they've been doing intergender wrestling for quite some yeah. time. Yes, but yeah, they've been right. doing... the, um, the social media champion or something like that? The digital media championship. They, the, the talent is that, yeah, they're now, they're on the right path to seeing the talent as talent and not just a set of chromosomes. And you know the the fact that they've got you know Jordan Grace with the digital media championship, uh, the fact that they had you know men and women in the call your shot gauntlet as well. Um, th this is a this is a step in the right direction, and this is probably something that's going to be overlooked by a lot of of, of media outlets. I think like Bound for Glory kind of got passed over, um, just with everything else kind of going on in the wrestling world. Um, but if I'm being honest, it wasn't that memorable of a paid preview other than Moose doing what he did to Joss Alexander. Yeah, that that is true. It, I mean... Impact is, you know, they have that, you know, that one needle in a haystack moment, and then that's it, unfortunately, you know. It seems like they do get that, you know, that buzz and that media every, every time Slammiversary comes around, and people do look at them, and they do get some attention, but they they tune in for that one show or maybe the week or two after and then you just they just kinda of drop off and they don't keep that those people coming back. Do you do you kinda of feel the same way or do you feel like there's another problem that we might be overlooking? God, you know, I I don't know if it's the you know, if if programming availability is essentially limited if they're not investing in establishing the talent um because Let's face it. Who who was the last really, I guess, homegrown impact star in the past in in the past couple of years? Who who can you who can you really say? Chris Bay. Um, independent, more of an independent guy than um, uh, came I from mean, the Dojo or something like that. I mean. You know, and the fact that I mean now that now with Minoru Suzuki coming in for one or two matches, uh, you know, and and the fact that Jay White showed up and then was never seen from again, uh, <laughs> I guess Jay White went went back to his planet or something, um, 
but it, it's it's a very strange situation with Impact. I, I equate Impact now to back to the heyday of the internet. Back when e-wrestling was a thing. Back when I would you know, spend my day, spend my, you know, weekends when I'm, you know, when I wasn't actually, you know, when I wasn't, you know, out with my friends, uh, writing out long role plays to help me win a match. And that's essentially what I believe Impact to be. An organization that's essentially trying to Start with a roster of somewhat relative unknowns, uh, say from, you know, Finn Juice and, and Chris Saban and, and, and Rich Swan and, yes, we could throw Moose in there, uh, but... Impact is like they're at a stalemate at this point. Seems like they just can't seem to get in front of the right audience, or the right audience don't stay to watch. And, yeah, and I mean, Impact Wrestling is not a bad show. I mean, uh, uh, the weekly. Uh, shows on Access Channel, I mean, they're watchable. And you can't say that about WWE and AEW sometimes. So, it's not like they're doing anything wrong. It's just that they can't seem to get what they need. See, yeah. The the thing is with AEW and WWE is that you can not watch them and still want to watch. That's not the case with Impact. If if, if, you, if you're a real Impact fan, you're you're gonna be, you're gonna be watching every week because you miss one thing and it will all go to pot. Yeah. Something that we might have wished we missed. Um, NXT Halloween Havoc was, um, last Tuesday. Oh my god, Chucky, you sneaky bastard. Oh. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, you puppy-faced gremlin. I hope losing runs in the family. That's right, didn't, um, uh, Rick Steiner have a run-in with Chucky and, uh, Good yeah, days of in, WCW. 90, in '99, when uh, when Bride of Chucky was being released, yeah, there there was a there was a voice that was playing randomly during WCW entrances. It was a laugh, and anybody who had an ear would have recognized that it was Brad Dourif right off the bat. Uh, but the fact that you had, you know, Rick Steiner interacting with Chucky, you know, which was such, uh, almost as much cringe as having RoboCop come in to save Sting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wasn't it Rick Steiner and RoboCop versus Chucky and Scott? Was that a match? No. <laughs> no. Well, I no, just... I, I, I'm, pr I'm pretty sure Chucky was backing Buff Bagwell <laughs> at the time. Um, Wait a minute, did he I, put Judy I, on the on the forklift? No, 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 no. Chucky was actually backing Scott at the time. Was Viagra on a pole? That's Shane Douglas and Billy Kidman. Uh, <laughs> uh but. I love the fact that they actually they went there with 
Braun Bricker. Uh, the fact that they had a friggin' Chucky doll in his friggin' locker, his friggin' locker room, and Braun's friggin' talking to him like. I mean, I I love the fact that Chucky tried to get under his skin. I was really hoping there might there might have been a Chucky appearance at ringside, and then Rick Steiner comes out, you know, to make the save. Not even the save, just to just beat the crap out of a doll. I mean, didn't didn't Scott Steiner beat up a blow up doll once? <sighs> I'm Everybody sure there's footage out there somewhere. Doll. Yeah. <laughs> it was that blow up doll. No, um Speaking of blow up dolls, no, no, I'm not going to. Um was we had a toxic toxic pancakes, I mean attraction when the uh what? What? the tag team championships and oh women's championship. James, keep your jokes in one country, please. Uh, international, international House of Attraction. <laughs> uh, we had um, Imperium win the tag team championships. It seems like Braun, uh, Braun Strowman Reed Breaker was the only one that didn't capture the big one on that on this night. Was this the first, um, the real reboot of NXT 2.0? All these new guys kind of getting their, their moment, I want to say, but maybe not the right word. Uh, first of all, I blame Izzy. She's in WoW now. Yeah, yeah, she's in WoW. Working with Wow, still a minor, still a kid who took a fucking choke slam at the age of thirteen. Great parents there, but don't 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 fuck with their parents or or, or, or don't criticize them or else they will show up and literally force everybody to boo you. Yes, boo um, boo child endangerment. I mean, they, they they were the reason MSK was getting booed. So yeah. And now I really, I really want to, I really want to interview Izzy, to, just so I can chat. You know what? I, I I'm challenging Izzy <laughs> to a match. <laughs> no, on second thought, Megan Mason is challenging Izzy. <laughs> and you'll match. be in her corner. <laughs> I will be in her corner. <laughs> And I will just be chanting, Boo, Izzy! Um, yeah, no, let me can I'll fight your battles for you. Big man, Scooter. Oh. Big man. Yeah. Oh, please, just ask my wife. She fights all my battles for me. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> the less I get my hands dirty, the better. Um, in all seriousness, this was... It was an entertaining show. Um, I'm not exactly sold on, you know, wrestlers with porn star names being tag team champions. Um, I mean, come on. You hear the name J.C. Jane and you automatically think, like, you know. I mean, there's, there's a fine line between wrestling names and porn star names. I, um, yeah, yeah, for yeah, instance, Cash that's, Wheeler and... Yeah, that's exactly who, and Dax Hardwood. And Dax Hardwood. So, I mean, JCJ is a little bit more mild than that. <laughs> uh, but it, it, it was an entertaining show. Uh... Stevie Wonder, though, did see that Dakota uh, Kai uh, appearance coming. Um, Since she didn't get drafted to Raw or SmackDown. Yep. Um, the, the the Dexter Lubis, Johnny Gargano uh, swerve and 
Trick Williams haunted house stuff. That was, was at, that, that was that was hilarious, especially the, the fact that we're seeing the zombie referee as as a regular referee. <laughs> night. Um. That being said, I was wondering if they really were going to have the guts to put the strap on Braun. They made the right decision, but I have a feeling that he's being fast-tracked. Oh, he had a championship in four weeks of being there. No shit. No, meaning he'll he'll be assigned to a brand by uh, by the Royal Rumble. He'll be in the Royal Rumble. I don't doubt that he would be in a, in the Royal Rumble. They already put him on the UK tour with Chopper. Uh, not wrestling chopper, but on the UK tour. Um, yeah. but don't, they made the right choice for chopper. Chopper needs it. Well, no, NXT needs it because if they are going to go on tour again, you're going to want that name value. And chopper is an NXT staple. Um, and they're building Braun to be, to kind of take that place when he's ready. Um, clearly not ready now. But then again, is Champa, does Champa want more out of his career? Like going to the main Does? roster? Yeah, is Champa like Gargano and just comfortable just being in NXT? Well, I mean, if you if you go to the main roster, it's it's a game of Russian roulette. I mean, you can That's get true. you can get used and you can get utilized, or you could just you know bite the bullet. I mean, we've seen it yeah, more. Yeah. NXT has produced more uh, talent for AEW and Impact Wrestling than actual WWE Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, and not to mention that if if, if Vince looks at him, Ciampa will get will, will go the way of you know Eric Young because he Ch- Ciampa is. He's less than six feet tall. Yeah, he's he's under two hundred pounds. Yeah. Um. I mean, aside, uh, yeah, you know, aside from Finn Balor, who, who. Who really had? Who really had the momentum? You know, throughout his you know, almost through his entire career, Jampa you know, spent a ton of time, you know, on the you know on the injured list, but also spent a lot of time as NXT champion. I, I, w- I would love to see Jampa up on the main roster. I wouldn't be surprised. If he just stays in NXT, I would be satisfied with him just being an NXT staple. It, it's no fun if he gets misused by WWE. Because, quite on it, honestly, to me, Champa seems like. The person who should be Triple H's apprentice. Backstage or in front of the camera? 
backstage. You know, that might be something he, he would be interested when, you know, he's in that twilight of his career. Yeah. You know, we we talked to, I think we've talked about, you know, Adam Cole going to the main roster and being the mouthpiece for uh, Keith Bearcat Lee. Um, and well, that wasn't kind of where he wanted to be. And now he's just kind of lost in the shuffle and the super click. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Taking those small opportunities and making the best of them, I kind of felt maybe would have did, uh, did Adam Cole well. It might serve Tommaso Ciampa in the future as well if he does get one of those opportunities. Um, Mandy Rose as the NXT Women's Champion. Um, mainstay or transitional champion? Well, I, I think, um, I think WWE learned their lesson from, uh, well, actually, no, because, no, because when they debuted two, two female trios within the span of a week, uh, that was the plan. I mean, Mandy, it, 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 I see it being temporary. I do see, I do see Mandy going back up after a bit because does she go up with Dolan and JC or that? Solo? That's the that's the thing is that Dolan, GT Dolan, JC Jane are way too generic right now. It did seem like they just what? gave them the championships to give credibility to that faction. Yes, I mean, okay, they're um, they're a part of a group called Toxic Attraction. Why are they toxic? What are they doing to show that they are toxic? And or attractive. You know, I mean, the idea of being toxic is mean, mean means you are, you know, expressing deliberately terrible behavior in order to ruin someone's life. Not just in the ring, but outside of the ring as well. And Mandy seems to be doing that. Mandy's already shown more, you know, more character than she's she ever did in her, in her time on the main roster. Right. Well, and I get, I get, it, it shows that. Blondes really don't have the mo have more fun anymore. Very right true. Um, somebody else that's not having a lot of fun. Um, SmackDown. Uh, SmackDown's replay on Saturday beat uh, a new episode of Dynamite that aired at the same time. That's an ouch on AEW, you no? Know? Does AEW care? Well, they'll tell you that they had got more ratings than Raw that week. <laughs> yeah, but then again, you know, you know, sports balls coming back. So, is that the one where they used a stick? It's the it's the one they were where they use sports. Um. Oh. Yes. Go sports ball. Um, yay. Yeah. I, I don't know. But 
now with the fact that AEW is playing to air the uh, D- Dynamite live regardless of time zone. So at the same time it's on for me, it's going to be on the same time for you. This is correct. Which, that still blows my mind how that's going to like... And it was one of their lowest rated Dynamites in quite some time, and CM Punk would open the show. So did CM did the CM Punk stigma kind of wear off at this point? Mm. I mean, was it? I I. Mm. And you you gotta get Punk involved in a bunch more matches. You, you gotta put him, you know, up on you know up at the top. You re, you really do. You have to capitalize on that. There, it's clear they're pushing Danielson to face Omega again. Um, well, it would be Paige. I uh, hang on Paige now because it seems like Paige might get that now. At um, full gear. Full. Uh, yeah, it's it's Daniels it's Danielson and Page in the finals of the Eliminator Tournament, isn't it? No, it's gonna be Moxley and Danielson. Page. Yeah, it's Moxley. And, yeah. Page is wrestling Omega in the main event. Yeah. Now, it was absolutely worth it to see the Elite bring back the Ghostbusters cosplay. Uh, and, and kudos to them for convincing uh, uh everybody that you know, the Stay Puffed Cowboy Man. <laughs> that was some good uh, show. <laughs> that, that 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 was. I mean, as soon as they beat the yeah, they started beating the crap out of the yeah the horse, the head of the horse. Like, I mean, they were beating they were the dead beating, horse. Yeah, dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> Now the question is those lyrics was like who are you gonna cover? They just say the elite like you can't like stretch those syllables, man. They gotta like uh, I mean the guy but... had maybe like two hours to compose it, so kudos to him. But yeah, to see <laughs> to see my boy is Bambi. <laughs> He made it big, didn't he? And the fact that we had a second Kratos. Yeah, who would better? Um, don't call me Stu Dick Grayson or uh, Tommaso Ciampa. I gotta give it to Grayson there. Really? Uh, Grayson, Grayson's was more accurate. Ciampa is more of what I would imagine if Kratos was brought to life on the silver screen. But that's why I like, uh, if we're going, if we're comparing just cosplay, then yeah, Stu nailed it completely. But if we're doing a ring, a ring gear inspired by the character, then I feel like Trumpa took it. Yes, yes, I will. I will agree to that. But clearly, Colt Cabana beat them both. Oh yeah, but um, actually, and I to add on top of that, Nakazawa beat everybody else, being the Adam Cole baby. Bay Bay. Yeah. <sighs> and you question why they had their lowest ratings. <laughs> Um, well, you know, at least Nakazawa wasn't covered in baby oil. Baby oil. You oh, you don't know what was underneath that that costume. I I mean, somebody they could smell it at ringside. He needed that diaper change. <laughs> um, somebody's hoping for better ratings. Um, WWE released their um their pay preview list for next year for 2022 
Um, and the one interesting thing was that there will be more Saturday pay previews. Um, is this a good thing, a bad thing? What do you form on Saturday pay previews rather than the norm of having um, well, uh, Sunday pay previews? Well, more, more of the casual viewers are are really are home on Saturday nights, you know. When you know, and I was a kid watching a pay per view on a Sunday night, you know, I had to be in bed at a certain time, so you know, it, it was kind, it was kind of like, it it was like. Oh man, I oh, this is I can't. It's this is happening this weekend, but oh god, I gotta go to school the next day. Yeah, uh, you know, I always wished for more pay per views on a Saturday when I was a kid. Uh, so I could be like, yeah, I can watch it, not have to worry about getting up the next morning. Um, it sh this should be that should be an increase of uh you know of of. At least a, a couple of their key demographic areas. Um, I'm I'm interested to see how they promote day one. Um. Yeah, because it's um a New Year's Day preview. I mean, because quite honestly, that sounds like a like a complete restart. <laughs> or uh, an Uso inspired um. Pick preview. Uh, then it would be more day one ish. Well, they are down since day one ish. Revenge of the Usos. We the ones. We the Got one. It. We the day ones. I mean, oh, and of course, oh, something else we overlooked. Yeah, the third Uso twin. <laughs> Yeah. Showing up. <laughs> Even the crowd was like, ooh, so, ooh. <laughs> I was like, fuck, that's an ooh, so. Like, they could, they could have, they could have brought it. They could have put him on the main roster as Joe Uso. Is it Roman Joe? Yes, but, uh, but uh, yes, but he's not. Their cousin, so they could still fit the Uso J scheme. He needs a J name. JCJ? <laughs> could be Jason Uso, could be uh, Jack Uso, uh, Django. Just, that's, no, that's, a, that's spelled with a D. Yeah. The J. <laughs> The D is silent. <laughs> and that's the way your mother likes it, Trebek. Uh, I'll have two um, I'll have it for two hundred, Alex. Buckfutter. Um Only on Peacock. Do 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 do. Yeah, um, Yay, more Saturday pay-per-views. What about WrestleMania being two nights, so Saturday and Sunday? We got a little taste of that um, two years ago at uh, 26, um, 36. 26? Uh, Whoa, hello. 36, and then uh, 37 last year. Uh, it seems like this is um, a trend that they're continuing with. Uh, do you like the two night WrestleMania or do you prefer the one eight hour WrestleMania? <laughs> oh god. I'll never forget when friggin' WrestleMania thirty three was seven hours. Um Should WrestleMania be two nights? Yes and no. I mean, it's supposed to be the you know, the Super Bowl of wrestling event, the granddaddy of them all. It's 
it being two nights, I see it causing more problems than it solves. Because now everyone is going to lobby for, you know, there's there's a stigma attached to it that the first night isn't necessarily as important as the second night. Well, as of right now, they're, they're still saying that Bianca Belair main evented WrestleMania, so she is getting that credibility. Y- yes, yes. But but at at the same time, you know it's you know, turning WrestleMania into two two and a half hour shows. Well, presumably there'll be three, maybe four hours each. Let's say let's say one's three hours and one is three and a half hours. No, no, it would never happen. Why do you say that? Because, because they're all about time now. And they, 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 it's not because, they're, time is their concern first. And making it a, a, making it a memorable two-night event is their second priority. Well, wasn't WrestleMania 37, three hours the first night, three and a half hours the second night? I feel like it was at they, least 10, 15 minutes. They, 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 they both barely got, both barely got to three hours, if, if that. This is something I'm going to have to check on. But, uh... Some call uh, the first night of WrestleMania the pre-show. And the real main event was, uh, the real show was on, um, Sunday. Any truth to that? Or is it just people being egotistical? Well, I think a lot, a lot of it is, a lot of it was also the fact that it was, you know, WrestleMania 37 was the first show that crowds were able to be at for a while, and it, it was almost like the WWE really was booking on the fly at the last minute. True. Um, With that being said, I mean, if they have more long-term plans that we don't know about, great. Um, if, If the shows are decent... I mean, if I mean, I, 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 I can't honestly defend the need, you know, the need for it to be two nights, especially if we, as the world is going back to normal. What about Russell Kingdom being three nights? That's Japan. Japan has their own thing. I mean, they, they don't wait for their fish to cook. <laughs> well, speaking of New Japan, um, 
they were under a time crunch, a, cure, a curfew. Um, now that things are kind of getting back to normal, they're allowed to do um, a shows that are a little bit longer and having more matches on the card. Um, this upcoming um, Destruction Tour, uh, the main event, which is um, next Saturday, I believe, um, it's nine matches long. Um, well, we've only gotten five to six matches during the whole pandemic. Um, with these restrictions kind of loosening up and um, getting more matches on a card that is, you know, an important paid preview esque type show, do you feel like New Japan is finally going to go back to somewhat normal or is it just the booking is just kind of wonky and that's why things are the way they are right now? Hmm. Honestly, honestly, I do not know. Alright. And I conclude the show for tonight. If you like oh, uh, <laughs> Hold on. One more, one, one more thing. Congratulations to Chad Gable, who graduated from Full Sail University with a uh, deg- master's degree in fine arts with a focus on media design. Congratulations to Chad. Um, if- Chad Gable Steepson. <laughs> yes. And if you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, comment both on YouTube and CastBox. Join us this Wednesday as we interview Ike the Bite. Of course, this in, um, this episode was sponsored by um, Player One Coffee and Rogue Energy. Use promo code Wrestling with E for 10% off your next purchase. Use the link tree. Yeah, play with coffee. Huh? <laughs> you, you, you gotta indicate the the coup the uh, discount code for which brand <laughs> yes. James use the link tree um in the description of the video below but on YouTube and Castbox um to find all that information um the best way to support us is to support our sponsors you can also follow the show on uh Twitter and Instagram at Wrestling with E. Um, follow us individually as well. I'm at James J993. You can find Coleco or not find Coleco because we can't find Coleco at I am Coleco. Um, and where can they find Scooter? Well, they can find me uh, underneath their bed with a really huge butcher knife. Um, you don't eat pork. Hey. That's Jewish profiling, and I find it offensive. Bitch. Um, <laughs> find me on Twitter, at ScooterDust, and as well with the remix for Survivor Series, coming to you live next month from somewhere brand new. And not as haunted as I'm making it sound. Um, yes, coming to you live from a brand new place. And of course, find me along with Rico Casatito Jr. and the rest of the Smoking Dragons clan. Twitch.tv backslash Smoking Dragons. For Coleco Yachts and Scooter Dust, I'm James Shea, and this has been Wrestling with Wi Fi. Entertainment. Hey guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and the WrestleLife.com, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hey folks, this is the Colossal Mike Law, and you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment. Enjoy the show, support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.